Hey guys, and welcome to the second episode of the Bantercast. Today we'll be discussing the second preseason test of the 2014 Formula One season. And kicking things off, we'll talk about Red Bull, because as you guys know, that team has been struggling so far in preseason testing. So guys, um, what do you guys make of it? Well, they're absolutely just failing the test, really. Um, just very poor mileage. Um, their Vettel broke down. He had a bit of a fumble with a uh, fire extinguisher. It was all very funny, and uh, everyone laughed apart from all the Vettel fans, obviously. So at the moment, I think in terms of the form, the world of Formula One, it's all going really great, actually. It's, it's just amazing, really. What do you guys think? As a neutral, yeah. It's, I mean, everyone, well, not everyone. Most people, apart from Red Bull fans, are pretty much fed up of Red Bull dominating, and now it's, it would appear... Uh, well, you can't really say Mercedes are going to be dominating or whatever because it is still way too early to say, but at least it's not Red Bull, which I suppose most people will be quite glad of or not looking like Red Bull at this stage. Yeah, I mean, they had a poor start to uh, this second preseason test, which was at Bahrain. They had a very poor start. They did get, they did get some laps under their belt on the last two days. Uh, in total, over both tests so far, they've got 137 laps. That's the third lowest. That is worrying for a, the championship yeah, winning team very, for the last four seasons. Very bad indeed. So, uh, Hello. Oh, my mic's working now. Have you just interrupted? <laughs> Literally, they were in the peak of awesomeness and you've just interrupted them, Matt. That's because right. I couldn't talk. I literally said, like, tits and vagina. These words that are in this, this little um, passage are just disgusting. <laughs> so, um... Okay, so Matty was trying to talk maybe that whole time, but we don't know. Matty, what, what were you going to say if your mic wasn't muted? I was going to say that my flabby tits are on fire whilst Ben was doing the introduction, but instead <laughs> didn't do that. I said it, and Ben just carried on. I was like, wow, that was impressive. We're professional. <laughs> you are professional. Whereas I'm on topic, professional. on topic. Yeah, I, I, thanks, Jody, for the... Who invited this guy? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, how have we managed to gain a, f a fifth person? I'm not sure. I don't know. We don't need him. But yeah, I think that you know Red Bull are really setting some good times. Only six and a half seconds off the pace at the moment, and uh, you know they really HRT are. HRT would be proud. <laughs> HRT would probably be a, a couple of seconds down the road, to be honest. I mean, I'm yeah. looking at a picture here of Daniel Ricciardo's face, and it's looking reasonably happy. But so maybe, maybe they're just going to be a you know a back marker for this season, and then come back strong the season after. Yeah. Well. Um... You know, like a McLaren from 2009, but perhaps. In, internally, you know, uh, they think everything's going really, really good. So, um, really, really good. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to trust. I see it. what you did there. There's so, no, <laughs> there's no <laughs> way that Red Bull would be happy with doing 30 laps over the course of one day, and that being classed for them as a good day. Yeah, it's they, like... I actually heard something interesting. They said they're ahead, one of the days. I think it was day three of Bahrain. Um, someone overheard one of their people saying they're ahead of schedule now what sort of schedule are they running if they're ahead well, of clearly their time machine's broken and going back in time hasn't worked very well has it <laughs> ahead of schedule oh. with like 30 laps on the board red yeah. balls yeah wow so um really? yeah so we're Red Bull, obviously a few issues with the design of the car, but also Renault have been very poor. I did. I saw a very interesting tweet from some guy. It's based on a website I follow, uh, F1 Technical, and it says, it says some people from Lotus think Red Bull made a mistake by integration of Renault's PU components. I don't know what PU stands for, but they reckon it's Lotus it could... personal umbrella. <laughs> Great. They reckon it's about the placement and not only the cooling issues for Red Bull. So they still they think Lotus, that Red Bull, have actually packaged the car sort of not in the correct manner. Maybe, perhaps. perhaps. And it's causing them yeah. a few more issues and just sort of exacerbating the cooling issues as well. So Yeah, a good thing to note is that. I think it does come down to that because Caterham and, is it Lotus? They've been getting some decent laps, yeah, you know, despite Caterham having a Renault engine just... as well. What do you yeah. define decent? <laughs> Well, okay, decent five seconds or something, aren't they? De sure, definition of decent, um, having 30 laps without breaking down. When you, when you compare them to Red Bull, more than the world when champions. When you compare them yeah, to Red Bull, they're not going too bad. That's like comparing it to dog turd, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, it's like saying it's like saying, oh, Marussia finished both cars today. That's a decent result. No, it's mm -hmm. not. They got nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a good thing to note as well on the on the engine side is um, like Mercedes, obviously because they build their engine and their car in the same factory. They've actually got the engine like a, a made into the chassis so like it's yeah. sort of like properly attached whereas Renault's engines are just bolted onto the Red Bull car 
So the packaging is going to be much harder for Red Bull because they literally have to make a, a chassis around the engine that they've got to bolt on, whereas Mercedes can kind of build it all. How how Renault's well, what it looks like being able to get it like almost so wrong. I mean, they've known for years. Everyone's known for years that these engines were coming, and yet Renault just seemed woefully underprepared for some reason. Yeah, it's like it's really strange. I don't know if like because obviously with the V8s and towards the end of the era of those V8s, you sort of had the whole trick engine like mapping and stuff, and maybe they just got caught up too much in that and sort of helping Red Bull mainly become so dominant at the end of that V8 era that they've just lost time with that, whilst other teams are sort of not given up, but maybe haven't put as much focus into it. And were, obviously Mercedes, we knew, were really concentrating on 2014 being a Kickstarter for what they hoped would be a dominant period for them. Yeah, and maybe you know it's looking promising for them at the moment. Yeah, and all the Mercedes engine teams. Uh, yeah, all Mercedes engine teams have done really good. I mean, uh, over the total preseason, I think uh, by Mercedes engines alone, they've done uh, two thousand two laps altogether, and that's yep. amazing compared to Renault's seven hundred and seventy. <laughs> yeah, and when you look at uh, Mercedes' fastest lap from Bahrain, they were only like a second or something away from the pole time last year. That is my fault. That is my fault. You're absolute <laughs> cheating so Jehovah. We've already kind of gone above last last episode because Ben actually knows some stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got, lads. I'm done. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Yeah, Until night, next ben. time. Nice to see you, Ben. Bye. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, as Ben pointed out, you know, it was, it was a really good time from Rosberg, and I'm pretty sure everyone's shitting their pants at how good Mercedes are right now. I'm, would you guys agree? At the moment, no. they're looking good, but Rosberg did Shut admit. Shut up, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just make a point about Rosberg? No, yes, go on. Jody hasn't thing. spoken really in this whole thing. Because Rosberg, he said he's really happy with their qualifying performance. He said the car's feeling really good in with like low fuel and everything. I'm like, they, they, they've been all right with low fuel for a long time now. What, they need to sort their long run pace out. Does anyone know what their long run pace has been like? Yeah, yeah. they quite bad. Um, yeah, they just go backwards. 1539 is the win. Nice, cool. nice, really nice mic nice there, Harry. Mike. We'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> so uh, the point I was going to make was, yeah, Rosberg said that the time flattered their team because obviously they're, uh, he's admitted they were in qualifying trim. So they were on the softs and they did that time. Uh, the nearest time was McLaren's Kevin Magnussen and that was on super softs. On They haven't said it was on qualifying trim. They just said it was like a, a lower fuel run. So we're yet to see maybe the true pace, but... Last test coming up, second one at Bahrain, third one overall. They'll be going down to really low fuels, I hope, by day four. So uh, we could see quite a bit of a nice battle going on. Just, they just need to just work on their tyres not exploding. They've had the same problem for three years now. Just Aren't the tyres more durable? For yeah, this? I think they're meant it to be double the durity. Yeah, I think. I think this year like they've really just durity. not cared about the tyres. Not... Durity, that's a really good word, thank you. <laughs> Definitely not a word. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> Durability, possibly, but I not durability. durability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Mercedes is looking there. I'm, I just, I just don't want Red Bull to win at the end of the day. I, I just don't mind what car comes over the line at Australia as long as it's not a Red I mean, Bull. It, it could be literally a cardboard box and it's on any wheels car with HR team line. written on the side, and <laughs> we would all be happy. Yeah, it re- well, to be fair, that probably could win because all of the rest of the cars are going to blow up by the sounds of it. So, uh... yeah, so what... usually, usually on autosport, they, they they do really good analysis of like the long runs. They show like sixty laps in the average speed, like average lap time. I haven't seen much of that though because I would quite like to see that. Oh, yeah. thanks for doing the research before doing it. Come oh, back. I had a look. And I couldn't yeah. find it. Well, I might, well, I've got Mercedes, got the Mercedes might not even be that. Got a few uh, nice uh, details here from uh, Craig Sabra, a mega man in the F1 industry for analysing everything. I know Matty loves his analysis, so he'll be loving this. I, oh, I'm getting ready. So uh, <sighs> we talked about McLaren's little tricky uh, trick trick rear suspension. Ah, uh, yes, yes, we did. Trick trick. Um, Suspension really? that uh, they've they've called the mushroom suspension, which I don't. Is that think... the one that I said about in last episode that bounces and uh, you know kind of does a bit of a flip as well? Or is that a different car? I can't no, that was a different car. I think that was Harry uh, Sebastian Quizzy. Vettel's car. Okay, go on, carry yeah, on. yeah. So uh, yeah, that so that uh, Hareth they had a 3D printed version of it at Bahrain. They've now come up with a carbon fiber one, so uh, it looks like they're definitely keeping it on their car. Um, but there are rumors that you know it's legal for now, but um. At Melbourne, 
if the rules come come in place, the teams are allowed to uh, maybe protest against it. So, uh, do we think maybe they're in trouble? Maybe I don't know. I think that could no, be a bit of ju- juicy mangoes there. To be honest, oh, we got Harry back now. Yeah, Harry. Oh, oh, Harry. Back. I have no idea why it stopped working, but he went under water. Nice he went under water. He sponge did you, right. um, did you want to make your point, Harry, uh, before your Oxfam internet kicked in? I'm gonna stab you. What? Um, <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, oh, okay. okay. But well, on the I... McLaren thing, I don't think there'll be too much issue. Because, I mean, you see teams sort of shaping their suspension arms, even at the front and stuff, like to divert airflow and make it as clean as possible. So I think McLaren are being extreme, but it's it might not be within the spirit of the rules. But, you know, that's just what teams do nowadays, isn't it? They exploit yeah. the rules as much as they can before it's deemed illegal. So I what's think they'll get away with it. Um, what's interesting, I've heard, you know, that are McLaren just really you know, putting as little fuel in as possible to then try and attract sponsors. What do you guys think? That's a load of crap. Oh, I, nah. I literally hate you, Jody. Nah, nah. Just... They're definitely nah, not. I don't think they, they would do that. They, um, this Thanks year, they don't, they're not they're looking not for title sponsors. Um, they haven't got one for the season, and I don't think they'll get one mid-season. I think this year is pretty much a year for them to really chuck money at the car and concentrate about the car and less about their road cars <laughs> and title sponsorships. And maybe next year with Honda coming in, they might get a deal with, you know, rumours or maybe with Sony or anything like that. Cause or Durex, possibly. Maybe, it's, yeah, perhaps. These are brilliant points, Aaron. I mean, the point that Matt made was just so piss poor. <laughs> Thank, you, Jody. Thank you very much, Jody. Other people have been saying, not myself. So before I drown you, can you just please shut your face? <sighs> I can't shut my face. No, because we're going to move on swiftly to the Ferrari. Because I'm not actually going to, I don't have any information. I'm just going to ask questions. Okay. The oh, Ferrari. Oh, the fr- yes, I am. The so, Ferrari seems to be plodding along. Like, how's it doing, really? Well, it, it was doing okay until it ended up in the wall. Yeah, that yeah, was actually Raikkonen's crash. That was actually like that. a quite bad crash, and uh, as usual, Raikkonen had not much to say. Surprisingly, uh, oh, yeah. after the crash, He's, he said it wasn't my. F- it was probably my fault, and then about five minutes later, said actually probably it wasn't my fault. Yeah, no, he started uh, the interview <laughs> going, yeah, it's probably my fault, um, and then halfway through, he said something about uh, so a lot of Italian. talk on the wheel, and, and, uh, yeah. and then at the very end, he just before the interview ended, he said, oh awesome yeah, I don't think it's my fault. It was it was that video you posted on Twitter, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the yeah the interview and the um what was it the crash? Yeah, there was a small video of the crash. You can actually see him you going hear off, it. but you could hear the tires screeching. So there was plenty of talk because you could hear the tires screaming as he kind of got on the curb and kind of lost it completely. So if a man like Raikkonen, the Ice Man himself, uh, can lose the back end on a simple straight line curb, then are we going to see plenty of uh maybe accidents in the race of this year? I think we could see some shenanigans. Great. What sort of shenanigans, Jody? <laughs> I I think we're going to end up our first race. I reckon nine cars are going to finish. Nine. Nine. nine that's my prediction. So, sure prediction. Make some predictions. So if a so you're saying if a Caterham or Marussia comes in, can just ninth, finish. Can just finish. Just finish. They can get some valuable points. Kamui's going to get the first point. It's going to be incredible. Okay. He's get that so, by dive okay. Everything. Predictions then. <laughs> As Jody's gone on to that, so he thinks nine cars will finish. What? What are we thinking for the top three at this stage of testing, lads? Wow, wow, that's, um, that's big. That's big. That's gets me bold, but yeah, yeah. it's Lost. gonna be bold. It's a lot of guesswork. A lot of guesswork. It could be horribly wrong. I but more you know gas. what? We don't really have too many standards on this podcast. So let's Make an educated it. guess. I think Rosberg will win. I reckon Hamilton oh, will. Hamilton I reckon Hamilton will DNF due to <laughs> something going wrong with his car. I can't believe Perhaps... he said that. I know he thought he would have thought not biased at all. Something going wrong with this car. It's not any driver error. Mm. No, I was yeah. gonna say he, he may end up trying to push too hard. I reckon Rosberg will beat him in qualifying. I really do. He's gonna make friends with Maldonado. <laughs> oh God. Now what's gonna um, happen is that Mercedes car is just gonna see the back of the Red Bull and just want to Hoover it up. <laughs> I don't know about the final podium. I mean, it's it's hard to tell. Oh yeah, like in maybe Hamilton overall. will after he's made a mistake. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to go for a bold prediction here. I think Mercedes, McLaren, and Ferrari will be the top three teams in that order. Oh, that, no was, really that good. is good. incredible. No, no, no Red Bull. I reckon they'll be like behind. That was really there. nice and specific, Ben. Thank you for that. Do you reckon, do you reckon you uh, there'll be six and a half seconds off the pace as well, Ben? Looking at your uh, time um, sheets, clearly just reeled off. Let me just uh, rub my glass ball here. <laughs> and yes. I don't want you to have Okay, seconds. yes. I don't want any rubbing of balls in this slipping band of class, please, okay? Too much. Right. I'm just, I'm, oh. All I'm saying is Felipe Massa is going to finish third. First race. 
Shumi's coming back third in 2015. Last. So sorry, sorry, Harry. I said what third last or what? no? He's gonna he's gonna get a podium. Oh, he's he's not. He'll come. He'll come. Oh, you're s- <laughs> shut up, man. Put money on it, Jody. You prick. I will. I'm gonna go on Betfred right now. No, no, you're gonna put money in my hand. Hey, <laughs> bet three six five. Great. Don't make a bet right now. Um, I'd yeah, like Kevin to say that. that other betting sites are available. <laughs> <laughs> we, are some, we, are, we are a professional <laughs> podcast here. Other betting sites are available. They are available, but... And um, please, please gamble wisely. Yes. yes. <laughs> if you have any issues, please get in contact with uh, Overtakes of the Week at Hotmail.com. Yes, we will get in touch there immediately. <laughs> so, now, let's swiftly move on to the Lotus. Now, the Lotus launched the car... It was a very funny launch because they went out on track and then appeared to launch their car at the end of the day. I have a feeling the Lotus are going to be doing a lot of a lot of launching with Maldonado and Grosjean behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> they've got they've definitely got a nice a nice two two pronged attack rods. At, it looks at, odd though, doesn't it? When it's on track, you can really see the difference between the one the length of one compared to the other, like one being longer, and it looks just so odd. Yeah, it looks and also just stupid. The rear of it is asymmetrical as well. Yeah. <laughs> The, the the exhaust pipe, um, if you're looking at it side uh, flat on, the exhaust pipe, t- t- uh, you know, kinks right, and then the pillar they've got to attach the rear wing kinks left. Yeah, it's really weird, and what it makes a big difference because during uh, they're like, uh, if you don't know what the word, uh, what this means is CFD, so uh, like computer. Oh yeah, cocks for dicks. Definitely. You are so those, sure. those two words are on the tip of your tongue without <laughs> hesitation. So, <laughs> so essentially, <laughs> computer simulations of uh, aerodynamics and whatnot, um, they usually just make half a car because usually the car is symmetrical. But what mm. Lotus have done is they've created themselves more work because they have to do the whole car because none of it is symmetrical. Well, they've been speaking very highly of themselves, haven't they? They've yeah, been saying apparently. On Twitter, they've been uh, raving yeah. about it. They reckon their cars of gay be... men kissing. Yeah, that as well. Do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're uh, they're in trouble money wise, aren't they? Obviously, that's uh, why Maldonado's gone there. They're still sort of looking for money, and they're big in the. Whoa, well, whoa, well, well, Maldonado's there because of pure speed. But, um, oh yeah, yeah, of course. And his etiquette on the track as well is just pure class. I saw that. I saw Lotus were looking for some aerodynamicist on some websites, so they clearly can afford forty to sixty k per annum. <laughs> so uh, they clearly expand. Did, did you did you apply for the job, Matt? I did actually. It said it need, I needed eight years worth of aerodynamicist experience, and I, I said, "Well, you know, I've played F1 since I was about twelve, so it kind of works I, out." I really, think just put could, one spring. I think putting like you know maybe four years of being on the podcast, telling us about all this analysis stuff, will be enough, really. I'll just go in. I'll go. You need to run one one eleven eleven. You know that? Yeah. Have you not got those dials? Oh, and uh, remember to uh, rape the gears hard during the corners and uh, downshift from seventh to first in the space of half a second, and you'll be fine. And remember, drill a hole in uh, drill a hole in your cockpit and add a pad to it, and it'll go so much faster. <laughs> but only have... Silverstone. Sorry, are they eight speed gearboxes now? Yes, yep. eight. Well, that's going to be years. really and, the, and according to this is I know this is kind of a bit unreliable. According to Max Chilton, okay, what a so this what might a be a bit master. unreliable. According to Max Chilton, these engines keep on pushing. So you know, like in a V8, especially on like the you gate, you just max out you, halfway yeah. down the straight, and you just go. All yeah. that, that's a technical oh, sound. It oh, becomes it becomes like a flat line from like the air resistance, doesn't it? And there isn't enough grunt to overpower the air yeah. resistance. And so stuff. apparently these V6 turbos just keep on pushing all the way till the brake zone, according yeah. to Max Schild. I heard power. from uh, Nico Rosberg that he reckons that at Monza we could see up to 360 kilometers an hour, oh, which is like to get that's that over, in this whole that's podcast. Just over now, if you don't know what that means, that's about 40 kilometers more than what we had last year. Yeah, that's insane. That is that is good. Now I'm not and too they're sure. They're gonna have to go. They're gonna have to go really skinny on wings as well for like obviously fuel conservation and making sure they can make it to the end with oh, the yeah. fuel that they'll, they're allowed. So they'll it's be going be... back to like the 2008 version of their wings. Yeah, like, that's, I'm really plank. looking forward to that. <laughs> plank, basically. Does anyone Pretty think much. that someone's going to die in the pit lane from, like, they're so quiet, so someone's kind of just walking around and gets flattened by Mercedes? No, no, they're not that quiet. No, they're not, the they're not quiet this year. I think that's, that's a really rule. good point, Jody. That's I know, rule. they that's don't rule. need earplugs now that when they're sitting a, by the, by the, that rule by the track. That rule has come in yet about um, soon, I think next year, they'll have to run under, under the curves during the pit lane, so it'll be literally silent, but at the moment they have to use all the engine. Um, mm. And it's, like, in the first gear, so it's really grunty, so it's actually a bit... 
Like uh, you can hear you can hear the cars more in the pit lane than you can on track, wow. which is really bad. <laughs> that is shocking, but a great point. Uh, I'm glad I brought that up. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> thank you, Jody. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to this podcast. Thank you for being such a great guy. Love you. <laughs> oh, get a run. You have to stand. Right. What? Okay, camera. Yes. So yeah. So um, Ben, you haven't talked for a while. Tell us what you're thinking. Right. Yeah, he's sitting there, sitting back, got his feet up. He's this like, is your channel, by the way. Breaking the subs in, raking them in. This, is your, this is your channel, by the way. I'm talking a lot, but this really should be hosted by you. I know, but uh, every so often, you got to give yourself a break. and you know, Every so a... often. <laughs> <laughs> every so often. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I know absolutely nothing about the second test. Well, that's changed. Uh, <laughs> so we thought that. I, I blame the Australian media because they just don't cover anything <laughs> F1 related. No one auto sport country. Dirty Australian race. inbred. What <laughs> country got the first race? <laughs> Dirty Australian inbred. So right now Ben's going on autosport straight away just to prove that he's not an inbred. He has all the info you could ever want if you just you buy it. I think it's like four ninety nine. I'm sure with all your it's, sub it's money you can right. afford it. You can he can afford it. I can't F1 afford technical. it. Dot net. It's fucking everything on there. In depth analysis via every car and every test. It's brilliant. Ben, can't you just admit that you don't give a shit? Yes. Whoa, whoa, is that a it's all seven thousand subscribers gone? Not about F one, but the testing. Ben. I don't think I don't think Ben gives a shit. Yeah. A lot of the main, like, a lot of, like, casual F1 fans really don't. Yeah. To be fair, Ben's only watched the sport for, like, two years, haven't you? Four years. Fuck oh, off. Oh, God, he's waving in disguise. Oh, God. That's why you were such good friends. <laughs> anyway, I think we should get back on topic, though, but... Anyway. Is, no, I'm with both of you before, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's why issues let's with corner on. cutting as well. Let's, let's move Jesus. on to uh, this, the, the big black car, which is Force India. I'm so glad you said car. <laughs> Not cock. Great, thanks. For, Shit, thanks Jody, for, <laughs> for <laughs> ruining the subtle joke. Doesn't car, <laughs> doesn't car in like Romanian mean cock or something? Yeah, it does. So uh, if any Romanians are watching, I highly doubt that. But if they are, I apologise. Yeah, but then yeah. they would understand the big black bit. That oh, falls in, yeah. That car is a peach for all you Romanians out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so... The Force India, Hulkenberg was setting a few, a few uh, a nice laps out there before before Mercedes well kicked in. So, uh, what do we think about, especially Hulkenberg, who set those laps on uh, two consecutive days? What are we thinking about uh, Force India? I don't, I don't know because I don't think this voice is really needed. To be honest, but, is uh, it Force India? Or is it Hulkenberg? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think Force India is going to be solid points straight from the word go. So they're going to fit. They're going to finish fourth in the constructors. Four. Well, they've got, it's good for fourth. them, isn't it? That they've got the Mercedes engine. Four. That's, that's four. a safe guy. So they finished four. sixth last year. So you, you, you're really Six. putting up there. Yeah, because they've got Hulkenberg. But literally, he makes the difference because I think I rate him very, very yeah, highly on my well. list of drivers. He's a very good driver. And I think he yeah. can really get up there. If he could just like lose like six inches of height. Then... <laughs> what, just no, just plain lose uh, all the height. What seat would he have got if he was like a gnome? Lotus. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He's probably glad that he's not in that pile of dog shit. <laughs> Very true. Um, it's quite. It's not. It's not. I, don't, I think it'll be all right. Oh, it looks lot... disgusting. And, yeah. and being teammates with Maldonado, Jesus Christ. That'll be my dream come true. Actually, no. He would have taken Maldonado's. Is that dream only there because then you'll be able to beat him constantly? No, because he's a decently quick driver. Bit of a psychopath, but you know. I'm sure we could get on well over a meal. He looks like a rapist, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, my God. There's been some issues in Venezuela as well, hasn't there? Been a bit of up, some uprising. So I think he should go back there and really help them out. Yeah, just fuck off out of Formula 1. Anyway. <laughs> so, so yeah, let, let's talk about um, not really testing, but F1 in general. Susie Wolf to drive in some F1 race practices. Oh, I was going to say that. <laughs> One, she gets to do Silverstone. And, uh, <laughs> and, and apparently Germany as well. Oh, Ninja. so we're going to see old Susie. Hello. Susie loser. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too bothered, really. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I reckon she's going to do a 1 minute 69. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think it's going to go anywhere. Because, like, like, they keep on pushing and they keep on saying, oh, we need to get women in, like, in general sports and uh, F1. And, like, they, you know, they talk about equality and all that. You're never really going to get it equal. Unless we stop bringing attention to it, 
You know, they keep on putting in titles female Formula One driver. Isn't one, the, the Sauber not... one, the Sauber one they brought in is actually half decent. It's done all right in IndyCar. Sauber oh, test driver. Danica Pat... No, not what? Danica bloody Patrick. <laughs> no, who, Sal... What was her name, Jody? Um, oh, what? Oh, she you, was you, IndyCar. You know, do you know the one? She did a ton IndyCar, but now she's a Sauber like third driver. All right. Um, is she going to drive next year then? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're looking to make her a 2015 racing because they got rid of that Russian guy. They realised oh, wow. it was absolutely spastic. Oh, she's Russian then. Um, I don't know if she's Russian, but she's. Oh, it's actually, Jebediah Springfield. She's got it? a few podiums, I think, in in oh, okay. so she's not Fair a complete enough. spastic. See, that's another good point. Like we we keep talking about getting women in Formula One. They need to be good at least as well. They need to be they able to, to compete. Fit. Let's be honest. <laughs> they need to be fit. <laughs> That's for me, anyway. I mean, about, I, don't, I don't care if they're slow as X shit. They need to have amazing analysis pack. once again. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they've got some good aerodynamics going on with their body, it's all good, man. I don't think they've got a nice, a nice yeah, coke ball there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to look up Sabah third driver. Okay, you do that. While Jody's on that, let's uh, move it back on to... Uh, on well, the... I'll take Susie Wolf in the wind tunnel. <laughs> her name her name is Simona de Silvestro the Springfield yeah that was it <laughs> and she's <laughs> they're looking to get her in a seat in 2015 she's Swiss she's not Russian okay how about okay I'm going to put something out else out there it's going to be quite controversial when is oh. Bernie Eccleston going to die <laughs> whoa <laughs> okay <laughs> um now that is a, a very of, uh... good question I'm going for 20 <laughs> 19 from a from a severe stroke. Well, he got away from his um. Didn't he have like a court case, case recently, and he got out of that one as well? No, like, they oh, said you're. He got out they said you're blatantly guilty. Two left. Don't worry. <laughs> He's so corrupt, isn't it? It's like, a joke. He, he the judge says Although, you're guilty. I can't prove fair, it. To him, like if he wasn't there, if there was just some you know pushover who owned the sport. Literally, uh, the Formula One cars would be powered by lawnmower. Yeah, he's he's done. A fair amount of good. He's got F1 to where it is today, but in the way, like, when you look at some of the stuff he's done, it's just like, yeah. Christ, F1 is corrupt as shit. He's maybe not done stuff the right way, but he has... He's tried... done it. That's the main thing. Yeah, he has tried to do stuff in the in the kind of... Best interest, they, yeah, of, the best interest of the sport and the fans yeah. who really don't want any of this new eco crap. Well, isn't he, didn't he, like, come out and say, like, basically the new engines were crap or something, didn't he? Yeah, they he, sound terrible, he, basically. He was even saying, like, 2012, like, oh, um, I'm trying to push for the guys to maybe get some sort of, like, instrument on that will uh, make artificial noise because the I engines say, sound crap. Listening to, I don't know if it's just the Red Bull or all Renault cars, but the Red Bull definitely does sound like a lot sort of higher pitched compared to something like the Mercedes engines, which they've got, like, a really low down sort of burbling sort of sound when yes. they go on the throttle. But the Renault does sound sort of still a little high pitch compared to most of them. Uh, for some I know reason. I'm stealing Matty Stonder here, but a bit of technical analysis. That high yeah, pitch Max, is ac- you... that that high pitch is actually their engine exploding slow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, going on about engines being lawnmower as if it wasn't for Bertie. In about I say five years, when global warming is is sussed for being big Perry bollocks, we're gonna have V12 turbos back, so Bertie can fuck off and die, and we'll be fucking living the dream. Lovely. <laughs> We're fucking have solar powered F1 cars and only be racing in Bar and Abu Dhabi or something, probably. Oh, e. God. They already had that. It's called Formula E. Have you seen it? It's like an no, RC I... car. I don't want to know. Sorry. Have you seen the video of the donuts they've done? No. Oh, my word. Please go look it up. Look up Formula E. Do, do donuts. I've got a nice uh, top comment on that video. Uh, it's oh. literally the worst thing ever. You, They try to do a donut. They can't even do a full circle. <laughs> And it sounds like an RC car going around. So they have to get out and push it the rest of the circle. Yes, they they might have to. I mean, the guy gave up and just tried another one. But uh, if they wanted to do a full one, yeah, they would probably have to get pushed around. I'm all for solar power cars. Uh, I've got another absolute lovely point here, lads. Please 20... put that voice away. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Arab made me do it. Go uh, out, show yeah. professor. 2014 F1 cars take twice as long to fix, so if these cheeky monkeys are crashing their cars in FP3, they could be fucked. Yeah, they yep. could be literally Jehovah for qualifying. Mm. Monaco's yeah, going to be interesting. Back. Who's going to have the balls for Monaco? Ooh. Me. I'm going to love watching. If Roman Grosjean crashes in the same place he did last year, literally Lotus will fucking just chop his head off. Imagine Massa crashing the same spot twice over the same year. Oh, 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 I've got another oh, amazing oh. point. Oh. oh no, 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 Jody, before What's point. the weather going to be like, Jody? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll let you know later. Matt, you've got a point. You've got a point, Matt. No, 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 I don't have a point. I just Jody's weather time. Stirring. 
Ben! Ben's ben. woken up again, is he? He yeah, went, I just woke he up. went Felipe Massa! <laughs> <laughs> it's Jody's weather time. Go! Uh, no, no, it's not Jody's weather time. Jody's weather time is in a bit. I'm just going to make a point about um, they're now allowed extra tyres in in um, practice, so you know the car the cars are on Good. track. Yeah, and, and they're also, also like, looking at um, qualifying. They don't know what they're going to yeah. do yet, but they're having. I think I read up the rule is going to be like in Q3 they can have an extra set of uh, the option tyre, and they don't have to start on that tyre. Um, so it will just basically mean they can just go out and just boss it. So awesome, it's... yeah. Because they've say, they're saving the, uh, like the world with you know V6's turbo, so now we can have a few more tyres so, to ruin so the world. Does that mean that like everyone in the top ten gets to start on a fresh set of tyres or? Wow. Um, no, I th- I believe I read it up like a week ago. I believe they start on one of their tires that they've used. One? Well, like the front left or something. <laughs> <laughs> you one three set. fresh tires and one, one really set. bad They tire. can choose the set they start on. It could be the one they qualified on. It could oh, be okay. a brand spanking new one they've. Why set. would you start on the ones that you've qualified on? That makes no sense. Well, you might want to save the new so, ones for later on in the race. You want the so grip on the, the initial grip off the line, don't you? Otherwise, you're just getting like people... People in Q3 will go out and they'll go at like five miles an hour and then they'll use that set to start the race pretty much. Mm, although I reckon that's what when they do one lap, they set some sector times and then come in without completing the lap. Yeah, I'm not yeah. Sure. I read it up like a week ago. If someone in the comments maybe knows it like like off by heart, then do tell us what the actual rule is. But uh, something like that. And there's also it's also affecting Q2 a tiny bit. Like they said, Q2 may get like a fresh set if they just get knocked out i don't know if they give bernie a bj yes the drivers oh have to God, go off the <laughs> oh my so God. that's why they're trying to get more women drivers in formula One. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <Most> derailment <laughs> but by the way uh, on jody mills weather well time um next when's the next um test session is that the end of february beginning of march sort of time isn't it yeah wait so... after, when we talk about that i'll give you the australian verdict oh okay Weather. Okay. Gonna say what the so uh, that's what you can look forward to, guys. So uh, it's, it's going, going to be dry and about sunny. thirty degrees. It'll be sunny with a chance of rain. <laughs> nah, I think <laughs> we're, we're lights, going off yeah. F1 2013. It's going to be a hundred percent chance of rain, but it's dry. Right. And you can still use intermediates because somehow they work. Yep. Talking about um, F1, the game, a bit off topic, but it's still F1. Today, uh, Steve Hood was talking to a fan, and I uh, just uh, awesomely butted into the conversation like you do. Good. And uh, he mentioned something about, yeah, um, the fan was basically like, um, I just tried F1 2010 again. I love the whole live the life thing. And Steve Hood was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I really love that. Um, we want to try and bring that back. And I literally jumped on that shit and retweeted that <laughs> in one second I remember, flat. I remember when I suggested to him that uh, the track boundaries should be what they are in real life and the white lines to find the track and going four wheels outside it should re- uh, be a dirty lap. And he said, oh, what was he said? He said, I, that sounds a little bit stupid. And I was just like, okay then. Sorry for, you know. Are you serious? I'm going to hunt that fucker down and maul him. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was exactly like that. It was, it was essentially the same thing as that. Just it's just having like, a mode like that, like a full situation. Yeah, fucking hardcore, fucking no It doesn't have to be the main lap. mode. It just has to be yeah, hardcore. It should be like a, 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 I think, you know, you have like career, multiplayer. There should be a separate one, league. And it has its own settings. <laughs> Let's just have... They, why? Why make it complicated? Just have the track boundaries where they are in real life. The white lines are there for a reason. They're not for fucking decoration. Yeah, true. God's sake. It's not that hard. It's like, oh, well, you know, you cut that corner, but the AI could have gone faster, so we'll let you off through there. <laughs> oh, that was a great option. Just jog on. Oh, the AI, uh, see... Legend AI can uh, go through there fast enough. Uh, while I'd love you to call... see how fast the Legend AI goes through Ascari. <laughs> yeah, because apparently Honestly. they must be able to go through there at a million miles an hour. They take about first gear through there. Right. <laughs> They must be going to, uh, at least a million because some of the corner cutting I've seen through there with that warning must mean the legendary AI are superb. <laughs> Literally just two red balls on top of each other, just yeah. incredible amounts of downfalls. So, um, okay, so we're go- coming to near, just basically the end. So let's uh, try and wrap this up. So... Ben, Ben, we've we've done the view whoring for you now. You can come back and <laughs> say goodbye. Hey, you Ben. <laughs> so, oh, uh, guys. yeah, how there you are. So. We talked about the Bahrain test. The next one is, I believe, in the beginning of March. Yeah. You think? 
Yep. So uh-huh. no response. All right. Uh, it's in Bahrain. Yes. Yes. That'll okay, be interesting. Lots that. of new, lots of new <laughs> so packages. We'll see you account. next time for another Pantacast, um, and we'll hopefully have some interesting things to talk about in terms of timesheets. Hopefully, Ben will maybe wake up for one of these and uh, no, tell us. It'll be the race. That's when he'll wake up. <laughs> I watch the race. I know everything. Well, yeah. Do that. And we'll. Daniel Ricardo was amazing. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Mark, oh, gonna... I have a picture of him smiling in my folder that says work. That's hidden. <laughs> Rick Ricardo's going to take everyone to the cleaners this year. And he's all going to be mad. Yeah, okay, jog on. When he's um... lost his job and he's flipping washing everybody's overalls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, Sebastian. Would you like that dry clean with my face? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> the funny thing is he'd still be smiling while doing it speaking of Weber he's actually going to be on the commentary team for the uh, for yeah, like the Australian like part of the like, Australian <laughs> broadcast talk about UK Mate, uh, the Australian coverage is world class it's better than anything this world well, class so much coverage, apparently, that's why they used to always use the English daily, commentators a few minutes ago this world class coverage did not cover the testing <laughs> <laughs> nice contradicting yourself what a cunt <laughs> <laughs> George so, Wills, everyone. <laughs> so uh, we're now looking for the. We've now got a seat open for the Banticast episode number three. <laughs> if you'd like to apply to that, send your messages to uh, overtakes of the week at hotmail.com. Yes, and for any like issues it. you had with the whole episode, you need me, Ben. You need me. Email. Uh, and uh, if you will, um, it's just a, not not really. It doesn't don't take anything into it. It's just address it to Ryan Alley three. Sorry, Jody, are you eating on our Banticast? I'm muting my mic. <laughs> okay, we're getting really off topic. We basically stopped talking about F1. Let's stop. Um, so this has been the Bandcast number two, talking about Bahrain. Next time, hopefully Ben will know more. We'll have Jody Mills weather time for Australian Grand Prix, and we'll have more <laughs> of this amazing stuff. I know that was brilliant grammar. Um, but okay, I'm gonna go through. Uh, do you guys want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we'll see you next time give it a like if you enjoyed it comment below what you thought of any of the topics we talked about do correct us if we got anything wrong and we'll see you guys next time remember to subscribe to all of our channels for more F1 content weekly we'll see you guys next time Later. Uh, don't subscribe to bed bye, bye. so bye.